Glorious Jesus, glorious Jesus. We are back yet live again. We are live pursuing the things of the Spirit. Pursuing the things of the Spirit. Send an invitation to somebody. Send an invitation. I can see people have started watching. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Though I cannot see those who are watching. You can place comments for for us to realize who we are ministering to. You're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Michael there we have we have Michael. Uh let's just be sending invitations to others as well. Let's send invitations. Uh, you can also send through WhatsApp if you still have other people maybe that uh, that are willing to log in. Uh, the word is just going to be very precise and powerful, straight to the point, and uh, the emphasis will be very strong. The emphasis will be very strong. The revelation will be undeniable. The revelation is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So let's take it to another level you are welcome for those just joining us so we we can be participating as the ministration is happening as always so that uh, we receive we have to receive uh, that which uh, god has in store for us we have to receive it uh, whenever a declaration or a revelation is mentioned you have to make sure that you claim i receive it the moment when you do that, God uh, gives you that same grace, that ability rests on you. <clears throat> that same revelation, that same grace is given instantly to you. So you're welcome. <clears throat> uh, it's, uh, it's imperative to pursue the things of the Spirit. You're welcome. Uh, anointed at Debbie, you're welcome. Paul as well. Paul, I acknowledge your presence, all of you those who are watching, Michael as well. Now you can send invitations if it's possible. We can send invitations if it's possible. Okay, so <clears throat> today's word is just going to be very, very brief and uh, the emphasis will be spot on. Uh, I'll be ministering on the <clears throat> on where we left off concerning the school of prophecy uh, the deliverance and all that will, will still do it but I, I feel it strongly in my spirit that uh, I, I need to steer up people's gifts uh, by giving them the right knowledge the right knowledge Jesus says my people perish because they lack knowledge so one of the things that uh, I want to indicate uh, as we are just beginning is uh, the kind of uh, death that uh, in an individual goes through or the kind of suffering that an individual goes through is basically uh, because of what they confess or what is in them based on the deposits maybe is it because they watched too much horror now they have so much fear they are always timid they think that this bad thing might happen to them they think that this will happen and also based on the confession so based on the things that you think and the things that you confess what you think, you basically become a one with. So we have to take note of the things that we think. You need to make sure that uh, your heart, you put a guard on your heart to say certain things, I don't permit them to, I don't, I don't think about certain things. I only think about the, the things that uh, the scripture speaks of, like set your mind on the things above, not on the things below. So when we begin to do that, uh, we attract God's presence, we attract God's mighty presence. Whatever we decree, whatever we declare, uh, we will eventually witness uh, the solid manifestation of God's presence. Uh, not just imagination where we just feel the presence, no. But uh, to witness His mighty presence where God opens the door, then He comes to speak to you live and direct face to face. Uh, in many cases, it begins in visions. But to some, uh, the Lord just chooses to come direct, live and direct, 
based on the knowledge, based on the revelation, and also based on the belief, like what you believe, what you have been taught. But the, the manifestation of uh, Jesus Christ is very real. It's very real. The Lord Jesus can come in person. You see him the way you are seeing me, which will be an open vision. He can come in a, a vision. Maybe let's say you close your eyes. You see him, closed vision. Uh, it doesn't mean he's not there, but it's just that your frequency, that's how you, you see. To say when you close your eyes, you are able to concentrate and draw uh, the spiritual grace closer to you. So some may have to close their eyes, some may have to open. Some when they sleep, the Lord visits, like according to what he spoke to Miriam. He says, do I not wait for you to sleep so that I speak to you? But as for Moses, I speak direct uh, directly face to face as a man speaks to his friend <clears throat> so <coughs> we are going to do a 40 day fast we are going to do a 40 day fast as uh, we have just started uh, this uh, this uh, syllabus of the prophetic we need to do a 40 day fast so we are going to start let's say from tomorrow let's start tomorrow which is a uh, monday uh, the 29th of october of course maybe those that will watch the sermon it can be maybe a few months later or whatever but god's message is still the same god's word does not die as he says the words that i speak to you they are spirit in life so as we do this 40 day fast we'll start on the 29th of october and then we will just make the calculation to say when will it end. I believe uh, it will end around the 7th, uh, somewhere there. Yeah, 6th, 7th of December, if I'm not mistaken, but we'll calculate properly. So, <clears throat> part of the reason why you need to fast, <clears throat> it will teach you how to maintain what you are receiving. Sometimes people keep saying, I receive, I receive. But they turn out not to see what they are receiving because uh, the frequency is not uh, is is not up to date. So when we fast, uh, we decrease. We say let God increase. So basically, this this fast it will be for your personal deliverance, uh, for you to receive the gifts of God, like uh, visions according to uh, Joel two twenty eight in the later days. People shall prophesy and all that. So we are fasting according to that. Uh, and also we'll be learning <coughs> how God speaks to us. <coughs> so we read the word during the fasting. We pray. We we read the word. We pray as we will be fasting. Yeah, we abstain from watching certain things. Yeah, <coughs> even like worldly kind of things. Maybe it's, it can be movies and all that. Yeah. You just avoid those so that uh, our frequency must be spot on. Our frequency must be 100% godly. We need to make sure that uh, uh, when now the presence of the Lord is coming, we need to discern it. So <clears throat> it becomes easier in the sense when we make sure that uh, the things that we watch with our eyes and the things that we hear, uh, we put a guard. When we put a guard, the Lord definitely will indeed help us. So we'll start uh, on the 29th, which is tomorrow, our 40 day fast. So <clears throat> the Lord's manifestation will be very real. Wonderful, wonderful. Those who are watching from Fort Lawrence, Precious, and uh, Gracious, and the family, you are welcome, everybody. So, <clears throat> God's mighty presence will be so real. So, as we are praying and fasting, uh, the Lord, some of you will have the visitations of the Lord himself. Some will be caught up in heaven. Some, the angels will visit you. The most important thing is to learn what kind of a frequency <clears throat> works with you. Is it when you are reading more of the word, when you are praying, when you are fasting, when you are meditating, then once you check that party, uh, you you now maintain to say okay that means my own frequency I catch the, the manifestation of God when I pray and when I fast 
So, <clears throat> you're welcome, Shaka. You're welcome, Shaka. So, without wasting much time, eh, I will begin now to to move uh, in the word for today. But uh, the main thing that I wanted to indicate is fasting draws us nearer, nearer to God. Of course, God has already come. We have received Jesus in our hearts. We have, he has already come, which is uh, what the scripture says. You did not choose me. I chose you. Okay, God has chosen us. But now we need to get his manifested presence. We need to attract his manifested presence. So uh, today, uh, I, I will start with this word. For those, <clears throat> of course, maybe you can download the sermon later and re uh, and listen to it again or write down the notes so that even when you are sleeping, during this fast, you must make sure that uh, you keep hearing this message over and over, over and over, and over and over again. Yeah, welcome, uh, Naledi and uh, Fusi Mashian. So, when when you are now hearing this message over and over, now it, it it for now, let me put it this way: your soul and spirit and body they are all hearing, but you need to get to a point where now the spirit is now the one in charge. The spirit is now the one hearing God's word. Once you have reached that part, now that's where the frequencies change. Once the frequencies change, that means it, it becomes easier for you to see in the spirit because it's now spirit to spirit. So your spirit feeds on God's word. Whenever you get a chance or when, wherever you are, make sure that there is worship or maybe audio Bible or <clears throat> sermons. Sermons that don't contradict. I'm talking about uh, concerning things uh that to switch you into the spiritual realm. So today, uh, there's something that I was sharing with the guys this uh, previous week uh, that was very uh, uh, exciting to my spirit for me to realize that uh, by the power of the manifestation of uh, the Holy Spirit giving me that revelation concerning Jonah. If you look at Jonah and Abraham, these are two mighty men of God that they uh, that ever lived here on earth. Of course, there are others. We still acknowledge them. But what makes me like Jonah, Jonah, uh, he prophesied God. Jonah knew, he knew that God is still not going to destroy this city. That's why he actually didn't want to go and preach the message, but which was wrong. But I'm just saying, uh, he had trained himself to reach that dimension where now he knows what God knows. He thinks what God thinks. Just like when Abraham was saying, if you find 40, will you kill? Will you find 50? If you find 10, will you kill? Abraham was simply tell, he was simply reflecting what was in God's spirit, though he thought that it was a, a, it was not him like a, take it upon taking it upon a, a, to say the Lord will not destroy the city because of what I'm saying. No, but he was simply prophetic. He knew that if God will find these people, he will not kill. So God was not going to kill the because of Abraham, no. If he had already intended to kill them, he was going to kill them, whether Abraham speaks or not. So Abraham had that ability, he had grown his grace to an extent where he now uh, knew what God knows. So that's a, a deeper relationship, a, a level of a deeper relationship we need to reach, all of us. Where you now know what Jesus is thinking, where you now know I remember there's a preacher called uh, Jesse Duplantis from America. He says the other time he had gone to heaven and uh, he started having uh, visitations of the Lord Jesus. So when when the Lord visited him, the Lord just walked into his prayer room. When Then he saw the Lord. They were just speaking. Then he says he discerned that the Lord was not okay. Now that's a great great level. That's a deeper dimension. He said, I discerned that the Lord was not fine. Then I said, Lord, uh, you, lo you don't look fine. Your people have hurt you. Your people have hurt you. So he said, I hugged the Lord. I comforted him. I postponed my meetings. He began to give Jesus Christ love. And when the Lord felt loved, then he said, I know you can now proceed with your meetings. So what am I saying is, you have the ability to attract God's mighty presence. We have the ability to know what is inside God. You have the ability. That's 
that's the kind of a God that we serve. I remember the other time uh, I had a vision. When, when, I, when I was in this vision, the, the Lord appeared to me and he had uh, saints. So when we gathered around, like we, it was something like a circle that we had uh, created. So we were just talking, but though we, we were seated. As we were talking, one of the saints uh, asked uh, me, he says, he just asked in general, but I, I gave the answer. I don't know whether I was asking the Lord or who, but I'm the one who gave the answer. He said, but who are these that are going to enter into, the, into his rest? That's, that was the question. He says, who are these that are going to enter into his rest? So me, I said, uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I gave the answer. I said, these who are going to drink this cup. The moment when I say that a cup appeared, uh, the, the cup was a transparent cup and in in that cup there was water so i said those who are going to drink this cup then i drank the water so i, I was actually making a research uh, uh, today though this vision i saw it i think close to eight years back uh, some time ago so when I, I said i've never really taken notice of uh, of that vision like in the like the scriptural part of it so I went back into the scripture today and I checked uh, to be John eighteen eleven, where it says, uh, Jesus said, when Peter cut the ear, he said, shall I not drink the cup that I have received, that I have received from my father? What is the meaning of that? Meaning to say, God, uh, it was God's will for Jesus to go through the cross. So meaning to say, uh, when I gave the answer to say, those who are going to drink this cup, meaning to say those who are going to walk according to his will, those who are going to live according to his will. So the question is, are you living according to his will? If not, ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, especially when we are going through this fast. Ask God to cleanse your spirit. Ask God to cleanse you, your soul, your body. Whatever that is inside that is ungodly, it needs to be deleted. It needs to be deleted. Don't even give in for the enemy. So I encourage you to say, uh, drink the cup that God has for you. I don't know what cup it is, but I believe everybody has a cup. So the will of the Lord for you, it can be preaching. Maybe God has made you a preacher. God has made you a businessman. God has made you a, a watchman, a seer. That means you need to communicate what God is showing you. That means you will enter into his rest. But if you live uh, not according to his purpose, that means you will not enter into his rest. So the, the fundamental key to this whole thing is uh, it's not so much that we just have to move in the prophetic or have the ability to see Christ and all that and disappoint him. No. Uh, we, we see it actually in the scripture. Judas had the ability to see Christ physically, which is a blessing spiritually he could also cast out demons but still he turned against the lord jesus which was very bad so the most important thing is to learn to live according to his will so <clears throat> today's word is a, it's a continuation from where we left off last week the hidden manner the hidden manner where the lord jesus christ speaks about he who conquers in in book of, in the book of uh, revelations 2 17 he says he who conquers, I'm going to give him uh, the, he's going to eat the manna that is hidden. So my question is, if you check that scripture, it's actually speaking about the, the times of uh, great tribulation. It's speaking about the times of great tribulation. So these times of great tribulation, what you need to ask yourself is, uh, the Bible says, those who without the mark of the beast would not be able to buy. So my question is, do you think you are going to live uh, and win? Or you are going to live and disappoint the Lord or disappoint yourself? So the only way to find out or to conquer is not to wait for that time to come. But it's for you to grow your spiritual life now. So that by the time those times come, uh, you are strengthened, you are beyond, you are stronger. You are stronger. So, how do we get to eat the hidden manna? Because this, Jesus says, those who conquer, 
I will give him, I will give them the hidden manna. He's not talking about in heaven, but here on earth. So that means manna is still coming back. Manna is still coming back. Just the same way the children of Israel were eating manna uh, during the transition of Egypt to Israel. They were eating manna on the way. Also, those who are going to conquer, those who are going to live by his will, those who have grown, they are going to eat the manna. But those yeah, that are not ready. They might not even test this manner. They will have to uh, pay the price. Like what, like what exactly what the scripture says. The scripture says those uh, that, uh, that sleep with that woman Jezebel, they will go through tribulation. It says those who sleep with Jezebel, who commit fornication and adultery with Jezebel, they go through tribulation. He's going to send them through tribulation. So I encourage you right now to say, uh, the teaching, I want to teach you how to eat manna now. I want to teach you how to eat manna now, not later. Say, ah, no, how, how, how does God get to promise you something to say later? And then what if it does not even happen? So <clears throat> the emphasis this whole week has been everybody has a gift. Uh, according to, I'll just take my reading in Matthew. Let's see. Uh, what I'm saying is basically scriptural. Uh, Matthew 25. Matthew 25 uh, from, from verse 14. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to, th to the one he gave him five talents, to another two talents, to another one, to, a, to each according to his on ability and immediately he went on a journey. Okay, I'll skip that party, get to 20. Then it says, So he who received five talents came and brought five other talents. That is the kingdom of God for you. That is the kingdom of God for you. So basically from what we are learning, Jesus, if you carry on, I want you to read it when maybe we are done with this. You will notice that he's angry with that servant that could not multiply. Meaning to say, if God gives you grace to make 10,000 a day, he actually wants you to make 20,000. How do you get to do that? You need to use wisdom. You need to declare. You need to decree and declare. You double the grace. You declare, I'm doubling the grace that I've received for the day. So if God intended to give you, like according to what the scripture tells us here, says, I gave them according to their ability. I gave the other one five. As I gave this one five, so in other words, it's not about the five that the Lord is giving you, but it's about ten or more. In other words, it simply gives you like a foundation, and then you, you need to multiply that which God has given you. Is it the prophetic grace? Is it ministry? Is it, are you a businessman? Whatever, that, whatever land that you are called into, you definitely need to multiply. You need to be fruitful. Just like uh, according to, to his commandment, if you check everything that God has ever created from Genesis, when you are speaking to the plants, the trees, Adam, Eve, he says, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. God spoke the word. So meaning to say we are we, made in his likeness and in his image. So the moment when God gives you something, that means you need to multiply it. If you don't multiply it, there's a question mark. If it's a gift, you need to make sure that that gift is multiplied. And how do you get to do that? Through, it's through declarations. You need to make sure that you declare over your gifting. You need to make sure that you declare over your finances. You, like for, for instance, every day, this is how I declare. I've got a business. I've got a printing company. This is what I do. I, in the morning, when I just wake up, uh, if you check that scripture I posted, it should be uh, Psalms 5-7. Where it says in the morning I will make my intercession. In the morning I will pray. I will talk to God in the morning. So the best times to pray is in the morning. Then when, because joy comes in the morning, everything begins in the morning. So when you begin to declare, I double the grace uh, for me to make money today. I double it. I triple it. I multiply it times five. I multiply it times ten. Meaning to say, if God intended to come and bring a thousand today, that means if I declare that by multiplication to say times ten, that means I'll make ten thousand. Then I know that, okay, God had given me a thousand. Then I multiplied it. That's how it works. You declare. 
you declare you declare and you make sure that you also use wisdom use wisdom besides on business or let me say on uh, angels people have angels but they are not making use of their angels that's why those angels they've just relaxed angels are now just saying ah, this one we don't even know if he's ever going to see us or not because they look like they are not ready they are not ready to move in the power of god so i encourage you right now to say multiply that which god has given you if let's say for instance you're a couple if you're a couple and then all of a sudden you see uh, that uh, you are married definitely you need to multiply you need to have children that's what we are talking about here you have the ability to multiply if you don't multiply it's not your it's not your problem because god said it in genesis it says be fruitful and multiply so if you don't multiply it's not god's fault it's your fault so what does god want from us god wants us to increase god wants us to multiply just as he was the trinity the father the son and the holy spirit then it decided no i need to expand i need to become bigger i need to become beyond i need to multiply that's the kind of a person that we save he needs to multiply he needs to see multiplication all the time he multiplied he created angels in eternity he created human beings that's multiplication that's multiplication so that's the ability that we are talking about so whatever gift that you have you need to make sure that you you multiply it just like a uh, matthew says it here how do you get to reach a level where you multiply like you you actually need to see uh, uh, like results it's not an issue to say i'm multiplying but you're not seeing results that means you need to sit down and be frank with yourself am i multiplying am i getting somewhere if not that means you need to challenge yourself are you living according to his principles are you living according to his word are you a tither are you are you a giver do you give offerings uh, do you sacrifice do you do things concerning the kingdom do you do you have any orphanage that you visit do you go to people do you go to people in prison do you visit them if not that means uh, there is something wrong there you need to begin to act according to god's word begin to multiply multiply give peace the lord himself says says if you arrive at a place give peace meaning to say if there was no peace or if there was little peace in the place your presence must just add, add peace our god is a god of multiplication so whatever gift that you have <clears throat> it's your responsibility to multiply it not god god already gave a decree in genesis to say be fruitful and multiply so all that is now left on our side not on god's side so we need to make sure that we multiply the ability to see in the spirit everybody has received it but now it does not mean you are just going to see all the time <clears throat> you are going to see best on what you confess you need to declare multiplied visions you need to declare multiplied visions uh, according to what the scripture says in Hosea it says God has spoken by the prophets uh, by similitude vis visions he has spoken he has multiplied visions through his angels he has multiplied visions through his angels so i encourage you right now <clears throat> to say is it what whatever thing that you want from god god has done his part you have it you have the responsibility now to multiply it you might say how uh, several times I, there's there's a teaching that i once taught uh, uh, in the prophetic school uh, th that we had uh, a live gathering where i said you need to learn to stretch your spirit you need to learn to stretch your spirit somebody was asking me he says prophet what do you mean you said you don't sleep it's because i've just decided to say i don't want to sleep the more you want to sleep the more it's like uh, the enemy will want to tamper with you so what i do is i translate i i declare I, I no longer sleep if my body wants to relax it's going to sleep but my spirit never i declare my spirit now it's time to work even harder now i have to observe the day how was the day now the spirit my spirit becomes alive like full operating at 100 percent i have to see my spirit now that's why my spirit will be uh, communicating vividly you saw this person this person is a witch this person is a blessing this person is like this this person is a prophet that you met this person that you're going to meet tomorrow 
which is why I've always said <clears throat> I live 30 days ahead of my days. We are here now, but I live 30 days ahead, which is why we have the ability to communicate uh, the elections, to say this is what's going to happen. It's because we stretch our spirit, we travel in time, just like what the Bible says. It says, uh, I want you to take note of what the scripture say. It says, uh, the prophet searched out with their spirit which time was the Christ going to manifest. It doesn't say uh, God showed the prophets. No. It says the prophets searched, meaning to say the prophets were stretching their spirits. By the ability that God gave them, they, we have the power to go into the past, present, and the future. We have that power to go past, present, and future. You, it's your responsibility to stretch your spirit to enter heaven. It's your responsibility to stretch your spirit to see what is around, what is happening in your business. You have the responsibility to see uh, what transpires in the spiritual realm. You have the responsibility. No matter uh, how much anointed you are, it doesn't mean you are just going to start seeing visions all the time. No, it doesn't work that way. It's just like now I have eyes. I'm choosing to open them. I also have a choice to close them. It's the same concept. Now, best, okay, this is what happens. The reason why a children, have you ever taken note that when a child is born, I was asking the Holy Spirit, why is it a child cries? I received a new revelation. Why does a child cry on birth? The moment when you, okay, if you don't cry, they clap you. They are activating you into this physical world so that your senses now, they become active. If that doesn't happen, that means the person, that's why a person now, they might not even be able to talk or cry or, I mean, to, like other functions. That's why you discover that maybe the child is dysfunctional or something. So the moment when a child cries, they are activating the senses, all the five senses, the sense to taste, smell, eat, like, tell all those five senses, it's touch and all that, sight and all, all those senses, they are being activated the moment when a child cries. So I hope you get the revelation. So for those who are still requesting for prayer points, like the lady saying, I have fever, I pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. I declare your fever to be normal in Jesus' mighty name. It's going to be normal. But I want to proceed with this right knowledge of God concerning growth concerning spiritual growth so we have the responsibility to grow our giftings we have the responsibility to expand we we have the responsibility it's your responsibility to make it that's what the holy spirit said in that other teaching it says for you to make it it's not his responsibility it's your responsibility you need to make sure that your business expands and how do you do that you you need to start seeing your business in kenya you need to see your business in Canada. You need to see your, your business in Australia, in different countries. Expand. Begin to think bigger. Think outside the box. Break the box. Think beyond. Think outside South Africa. Think outside Africa. Think outside Europe. Think outside America. Break forth. Expand. God has given us the ability. Remember here we are speaking about multiplication. That means that which God has given you is fine. But you now need to multiply it. You definitely need to multiply it. Make sure that you multiply. How do you multiply? It varies with the area that you want to multiply. Is it a physical gift? If it's a physical gift, you can multiply it like a business. You need a branch. You need a branch. If it's a ministry, it needs a branch. If it's if it's it might not be a branch, but you can raise sons, which is the same thing uh, that uh, that I'm actually called for. To say I need to make sure that someone else sees in the spirit. I'm actually expanding myself. I'm stretching myself into someone's life. The same ability, the same knowledge that God has given me, I'm now implanting it in you. So now as this knowledge is being implanted in you, you are being unlocked into the spiritual world, into the celestial world, where now seeing no longer becomes an issue. That's why you see that uh, we can all be prayed for, just like uh, uh, this scripture, it, it puts it very well. It say they all receive the gifts. The other one stretched times two. The other one stretched times two. But it's only one person that did not want to stretch. The same concept. Have you ever taken note of a if uh, of that case of the ice block? 
if you pour water on that uh, tray for ice block and put it in the fridge if you if you take note you will see that uh, it's all those ice it's not like they are going to be a uh, solid at a go like same time no if you go and check this is your own experiment your own experiment go and check you will see that in 30 minutes you will find another one it's actually now a block the other one is still water you just put your finger like this it just drops inside why but you pour water from the same tape at the same time that means the other one is choosing to agree the other one is choosing to be lazy so according to what christ tells us he says to the lazy i crush but though that's not where we are as we are here for expansion i'm here to ensure that your ability as god created you with soul with your soul spirit and body you are able to see you're able okay you might not be a prophet but right now we are speaking to a person who god has given the ability to stretch himself in other people what am i saying by that like what God spoke to Moses, says, implant your spirit into the 70 elders so that they might help you the work. When God did that, it transpired. So if it means we can agree, we can make a kingdom, just like what happened with uh, David and Jonathan. They became one to expand. They became one to expand. So you have the ability right now. That's why you see that uh, if, you, if you take note of those that I've prayed for, Take note of those that I've prayed for. Whenever they give prophecies, they give international prophecies. They, so they, they might not know where is the meds coming from. Because I, I just used to be a common man. But all of a sudden, I have just started seeing all these good visions. All of a sudden, I have just started seeing uh, the international prophecies. They, they don't know what's happening. My spirit, which is a global spirit, is entered into them. Now they are expanding. They can see beyond. They don't just give individual prophecies, but they can give international prophecies, just like I do. What, what's happening there? That means my, I've expanded myself into becoming in them, just like Christ. Christ himself has entered into us. The kingdom is growing. The kingdom is growing. It's expanding. This might sound, sound biased to, uh, to those who are of flesh, but for those who are born of the Spirit, they will understand clearly that uh, the Spirit of a prophet, if it lands on you, that means you receive the same ability. You receive the same ability. Even right now, uh, I remember the other time uh, when Elijah appeared to me. When uh, Elijah appeared to me, he spoke to me vividly. He said, the grace that was upon me is upon you. Meaning to say, God gave me Elijah's spirit. But now, have you ever had, uh, I think, uh, you, I, I don't know if, if it was William Branham or other preachers where they ended up saying, I am Elijah to come. Those people actually don't blame any of them, but it's just the revelation that they, they were lacking. The right revelation. Because this is what happens. If God gives you the spirit of John or the spirit of Samuel in the Bible, God still does that way he's, he, is, he gives that ability. Right now, there is no new prophet anyway. There is no new prophet. You are simply a continuation of an old prophet that was in the scripture. You are simply a continuation. So what God does is when he's uh, manufacturing that new prophet, what he does is he sends, he imparts the spirit. That's why Jesus said, if you are willing to accept, he is Elijah to come, meaning John. What really transpired? It was the spirit of Elijah. It was the spirit of Elijah. So, I, I'm not Elijah to come. Hear me very well. I'm not Elijah to come. Elijah is still going to appear. Elijah and Moses. And they're going to be working from Israel. Those are the two witnesses mentioned in the book of Revelations. They're going to appear. Here what I'm saying is, the spirit, God expands the spirit from heaven. So, those prophets were now saying, I am Elijah to come. I don't blame them at all. I don't blame them at all. Why? Because the prophet like Elijah, when he came to me, if I lacked revelation, I was going to misinterpret what he told me. I was going to start saying, so that means I am Elijah to come. Yet I'm not, but I've received his spirit. I hope it's very clear there. If it's uh, very clear to you, just place a comment so that we, 
we move on, we move on, we move on. We are conquering, we are conquering, we are expanding. Refuse to remain the same. Expand. One thing that I want to tell you, this is, this, this is another secret. This is another secret. This is another secret. The one that I just gave you. To say, you might be thinking that uh, you just move in the prophetic just like that. No. You have to receive the spirit of the person that is already operating. So if you don't want, that means you, you, want, to op you want to pioneer. That means you have to pay the price. You definitely have to pay the price. And it might not be nice. It might not be nice. It might not be nice at all. So God bless you. Uh, this, this is how you expand. For those who are open on these 40 days as you are praying and fasting, God will stretch my spirit into uh, becoming one with you. I remember the other time. This, this was the time now when I was moving in crazy fastings. I, 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 it's like I had reached a stage where I no longer knew whether I'm, was I fasting or not. Where you actually forget. You think maybe after four days, say, was I eating? What was happening? Or why am I not eating? Am I fasting or something? I'd reached those dimensions. Then I remember when I saw this vision where the Lord Jesus walked into me. When he walked into me, I asked the revelation uh, to the Holy Spirit. I asked him, I said, it's as if I only received Jesus today. Why does it look like that? Because the Lord Jesus, he just walked into me. What does that mean? That's when the Holy Spirit showed me a revelation to say, when a person receives, when you say I receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, what you receive there, it's energy of the presence. You receive the light of the presence. He gives you the light of the presence. So the more you pursue the things of Christ, the more you pursue him, that's when he will eventually come in his first person like how he did to me. Where you are now walking or living a holy life. That's when you have abilities. That's why you be, things like attacks, we don't even know them. Why? It's because it's Christ living in us. We are not claiming. It's Jesus Christ living in us. We are not claiming it at all. Why? I've seen him. He walked into me. He can walk into you. That means if my, when my spirit is coming upon you, with the same Christ that has walked into me that I have never seen walking out. That means you are going to move at an apostolic dimension. You will be a financial apostle. You will be a prophetic machine. You will be prophesying like milk day and night. You will be entering heaven in and out anytime. Seeing the things that are transpiring in heaven here on earth. Just like what Jesus was saying. He says, my father has not left me even now. What made Jesus speak that? Jesus was telling the truth. Remember, the Bible says, and that truth is Christ, Jesus Christ. So if that truth is Christ, when he's saying to my father, has not left me, he was not speaking of assumptions or by faith. He was saying things the way they were, meaning to say he saw the Lord, he saw the Father entering into him. It says all of you will scatter, but he who sent me has not left me. He will not leave me. So I encourage you, to say, stretch forth your spirit. I want you to do this 40 day and 40 nights. I mean, 40 days, not nights. We are only doing 40 days. At night, we break after 6. We break after 6. But when you are now eating, don't overeat to say, I was very, very hungry. No. Just eat a normal, decent meal. Not where you now dish a plate like this. So it's as good as that uh, you are not even fasting. You will not even see a change. That's why you see people say, Ah, prophet, I was fasting, but how come on this fast I never saw a change? It's because when you finish the fast at six, you eat like this. A big pup like this with rice, with meat. That means you are not even fasting. You are just on pause. So when you are now eating late after six, you just eat just a little, a little, a decent meal. A healthy meal. Hallelujah. So God bless you. God bless you. Uh, are there any questions there? <laughs> I don't know. I was laughing there. 
Because if you are now eating as if it's a revenge now to say, ah, I was not eating. The first days when, well, when I started fasting, that's how I used to fast. And I, I discovered those days God never used to answer because we're just on pause. We just go on pause in the morning. And uh, especially those other days when I first, when, when, when I had that six to six, like six in the morning to six at night, I used to think that. Yet it's actually 6 p.m. To 6 p.m. Do you understand? So that means you must, if you eat at 6, that means you must eat again tomorrow at 6. So those other times when we heard about, when I heard about fasting, I was still very young in faith and age. I was 12. We used to wake up, me and my brother, then we cook. Uh, we cook at 5. So that by the time 6, uh, it's now, by the time it gets to 6 in the morning, we say, oh, we are not going to eat. But just after six again at night, we eat. <laughs> those, te those times, we never used to see why, uh, the reason why we're fasting. And also, when, when, when this guy told us, no, we must eat six later, then I said, oh, okay, no, that's good. But now, when you say that, we'll start with porridge, tea, uh, lunch, and supper. We'll eat all four of them at night. And I was asking myself, why are we not seeing changes? It's because we're, we're on pause. So you just need to eat a normal, decent meal. Just a normal, decent meal. A normal, decent meal. Just maybe, yeah, let's say the size of this plate. The size of this plate. It's still fine. So for 40 days. And also... The reason why I don't want you to eat much is because I want you to partake of heavenly food, he heavenly manna, the one we spoke about in, in Revelation 2.17. I want you to eat that hidden manna that Christ is speaking of. Whenever you... Okay, this is this, this how we are going to be doing the fasting. You'll be declaring every day to say, tonight I'll be caught up in heaven. I'll, sit, I'll see myself seated together with Christ. You declare that with believing as you believe. So on these 40 days, uh, we are going to be praying every day, at least pray minimum an hour. And you also may need to make sure that you read the word. Make sure that you read the word. Make sure also that you have enough time to meditate. So how do you have enough time to meditate? You meditate throughout the day as you are working or as you are doing whatever that you are doing. You'll be just meditating constantly. Be thinking about the sermons. Just be thinking about today, I'm going to meet the Lord Jesus as I meet him. I'll be energized. My spirit will be energized. I'm going to ask him to empower me so that I can empower his people. I need to multiply. I need him to give me the wisdom. I need the Holy Spirit to, to multiply. So even the presence of the Holy Spirit, that means it needs to multiply. It can grow. It can grow. So that's what we need. That's what we are talking about. So I encourage you to say, uh, in these 40 days, just declare, I am going to eat the hidden manna. As it's written that he who conquers, you declare I am more than a conqueror. I have already conquered in the name of Jesus. You begin to declare, quote, quote God's blessings. Pray scriptural. Pray according to this uh, knowledge and revelation, according to, to the teaching. You pray, I am prosperous. I am going to meet the Lord. I will meet the angels that have been assigned to work with me. They will tell me their names. They will tell me. Of course, some angels can tell you their names, some they, they might not. So that uh, shouldn't be an issue if they won't tell you their names. So it depends. So you'll be caught up in heaven. You'll be declaring all those things. Whatever you declare in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever you are going to declare, I seal it in the name of Jesus. It's going to come to pass. Whatever you are going to declare in the name of Jesus, even people like Strelo, Strelo, on your little child, speak a blessing. Speak a blessing. Begin to declare those covenant blessings to say, this child, you'll be caught up in the heavenly places. All those things. There's something that, uh, that is very, very profound with my, with my little newborn. Uh, I think now he's, he's turning a year. He's turning a year. So this is, what, this is what I've noticed, that he likes bathing. He likes water. So the reason why he likes water is because of children are actually taught to, to live inside water in heaven. So, but with the other children, I never used to. 
see much of that but with this one i have realized that it's because i kept on declaring 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 so he's still able to download the things that he's seeing in the spirit to bring them he loves to be in what children in heaven they are trained by angels to live inside water to breathe in what to live in what they in heaven they actually taught almost let me say all their lessons under water in heaven i know somebody will be now uh, those who are kind of be now saying it's marine spirits it's a it's a lack of knowledge it's a lack of knowledge so i encourage you to say be declaring just declare i will enter through the gate of benjamin i will enter through the gate of judah i will enter through i want to see the new jerusalem lord in these 40 days i want to see the new new jerusalem i want to see how we are going to be ruling the nations with the rod of iron together I want to see. I want to see what is my part. I want to see all the promises that you have spoken over me. Declare all these blessings. Activate them. I assure you that uh, the devil will be in trouble. And you'll be celebrating. And from there, you need to maintain. You maintain by fasting. You maintain by prayer. So others, if you are asking yourself to say, but will this really happen? Yes, it will really happen. If it has happened to me, that's why I was telling you about implanting my spirit to you. I implant my spirit to you right now in Jesus' name. It's because I have that ability. I've entered heaven. I've sat in the council of heaven several times. I've met even other prophets here on earth. Uh, I won't mention their names though. Like where I've sat in the council, I've seen them. Like in the council of the third heaven, where I've seen them sitting with the great God Jehovah. So I encourage you, my, if my spirit is doing it, that means... Once you bind my spirit to your spirit, uh, it's a done deal for you. You'll be operating at the same frequency. The Lord, if he does not recognize you as that person with that grace, he will recognize you because of my grace in the name of Jesus. Which is why most of the time when I pray for people, I say, may my grace speak for you. Meaning to say the grace of God that he has given me, I'm expanding it to say, let it also speak for you. The Lord might not recognize somebody says, but this one, I do recognize him. <clears throat> So it's your portion in the name of Jesus. And that's how it works. You, might, you mustn't say, ah, so that means God doesn't love me. No, it's just an issue of principles. It's just an issue of principles. It's, it's an issue of revelation. It's an issue uh, of revelation. It's an issue of revelation. So God bless you. I speak divine multiplication and divine grace in the name of Jesus. Okay, there are also people, I can see certain messages, though not on this platform, that are sending messages saying they are trying to log in, but they seem to be failing. They, they seem to be failing to, uh, to log in. So I don't know if Mike, you can invite this guy. I think his, his name is Hesson Mosindo or something. He's sending inbox messages saying he wants to log in. He's failing to, to log in. So I encourage you to multiply. Ensure that you multiply. Refuse to remain the same. Refuse to remain the same. Stretch your spirit uh, every day concerning your business, concerning your spiritual life. I want you to declare double grace. Declare double grace. Declare double grace. Declare double grace. Multiply. Multiply. Make sure that you declare. This is what. I, this is how I do my day. Like uh, this is how I begin my day. The moment when I see that uh, uh, my spirit has just returned into my body, I begin to declare. That will be in the morning. I begin to declare my day. My day shall be prosperous. Every plot of the enemy against me is going to fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Every plot when they gather together according to Isaiah, they shall scatter. Their words will not stand. In the name of Jesus. Then I begin to declare God's promises over my life, over my ministry. So I want you to do likewise. You begin to speak forth God's word over your life. Speak forth God's word. Don't take God's word lightly. Declare and avoid uh, unbelief. How do you avoid unbelief? That means you always need to read more of his word. More of his word without excuse in the name of Jesus. So we are expanding. Our territory is enlarged in the name of Jesus. I enlarge your territory in the name of Jesus. 
your territory today has been enlarged in Jesus' mighty name. Whether it shall be a rebroadcast, whether you shall be watching live, uh, I mean on YouTube, it's still going to work for you. I pray that you receive this grace in Jesus' mighty name. The same grace that is working for me will work for you in Jesus' name. So declare. You don't just declare. I see a first machine saying I declare double grace. A ultimate grace upon my spiritual father, which is good. So when you're starting, you start like that. But I want you to reach a stage where you multiply by 50, by 100. This is where now it becomes like a breakthrough. Especially if we are already living according to the principles. How, when I'm saying <clears throat> to the principles, make sure that you are tithing, make sure that you are a giver, make sure that you put a smile on someone's face. Make sure also that you are prayerful. Make sure that you are you are a person that uh, that hates the demonic, that takes authority. They take take principles, like keep principles, take authority over all the power of the enemy. Crush Satan's plans. According to the scripture, it says, the God of peace, the God of peace will crush Satan and put him under your feet. So I declare right now, may the God of peace crush Satan and put him under your feet. None of your belongings shall be tempered with by the devil in Jesus' name. From your cars, from your properties, from your marriage, from your children, in the name of Jesus, you shall not die. I energize you with it with the energy of immortality in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are sick, I minister healing right now in Jesus' name. If you are bound, if there are shackles of delay, of misfortune, hardship, I break them in the name of Jesus. If there's a witch or a wizard monitoring you or a satanist, any spirit personality standing to oppose you, I crush them by the power in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Your business shall stand. Their witchcraft, their words will fail. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ says, let's say you are the head and not the tail, will stand over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. You are multiplying. You are overcoming. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. That which God says about you will come to pass. That which Jesus Christ, who is our intercessor, says about us, it shall stand in the name of Jesus. None of the words of the enemy shall prevail against us. We stand in one accord right now, you and me. We bind ourselves together and agree by faith that Christ is our Lord. Jesus Christ is our Lord, is our Savior. We are prosperous. We are fruitful. We refuse to lack. We refuse to suffer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare peace. Peace in your family. Peace, unity in the mighty name of Jesus. Even... Uh, as I'm talking about this, I remember now one of the visions that God has given me now. One of the messages that he gave me in the past few months. The Lord said, let's make peace with our family members. He says, those people, I gave them to you for you to teach them. So you need to teach your family love. Your, your family. I understand that family, they think that they know what they know. But sometimes I know that the distance is good. But you make sure that you're at peace with them. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Forgive them. If they hurt you, make peace. Why? Why did the Lord say this? It's because the Lord wants to visit us. The Lord wants to visit us as individuals, as families, in ministries. So as the Lord visits, if he finds that there's, there's horror, like what he says, if you have issues before you come to my old says go and fix issues so let's go and fix whatever issues that are behind so that we can overcome in the name of Jesus so let's pray for South Africa and also let's pray for Zimbabwe that there be no civil war we pray against civil war in Jesus name in these two countries I see a uh, spirits that are rising trying to uh, to steer up tension in the spiritual realm we stand to oppose civil war in Jesus' name. In South Africa, we stand to oppose civil war in Zimbabwe as well. In the name of Jesus, we also speak a blessing over the nation of Israel. 
as we are commanded by the Lord. We pray for Israel. If you want your things to move very well, pray for Israel. If you want uh, your stuff to move well with no hiccups, pray for Israel. Declare peace in Israel every day without failing in the name of Jesus. The more you declare peace in Israel, the more God will give you peace in Jesus' name. So we also speak peace in America in the name of Jesus. So are there any questions? If you have any question, please put it through there. I think today that was the message that uh, the Holy Spirit had given me. It was very brief. If you have any question, please put it through there. Thank you, Lord. So the 40-day fast is on, starting from tomorrow to the 40th day, basically every day. Just do 40 days. And I see the Lord visiting you, seriously. I see the Lord visit you. I see you see the presence of the Lord, the manifested presence of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sprogno onziridi ashta abrasi ka alamadesh. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We are going to meet again Wednesday, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Wednesday. 8 p.m. Wednesday. Sprogna alakradi vania asproko delevani session. The hunt is on. I agree with you. The hunt is on. We are overcoming. I know food is nice, but uh, <laughs> I believe spiritual food is even more nicer. Spiritual food is even more nicer. So on this 40 day, you need to be declaring, I will eat the hidden manna. Most of you are going to eat it. You must also involve the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to say, teach me. Enlighten my eyes. Enlighten my eyes. Holy Spirit, enlighten my eyes. You mentioned the Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the ability to, to do the extremes. In as much as God has already given us the ability. But the Holy Spirit is the one that uh, expands us. The Holy Spirit is the one that expands our territory. So you need to pray and involve the Holy Spirit. Ask him. He says, I'm meditating Holy Spirit. I need a solid encounter with you. I need a solid encounter with you in the name of Jesus. So, for all the tithers, I speak a blessing right now in the name of Jesus. May God protect your family. God protect your finances. God protect that which he has given you. Your tithe is your protection in the name of Jesus. You will not experience any form of witchcraft. You will have the God kind encounters in the mighty name of Jesus. Even the partners... Lord, I pray for these that are partnering with this vision. Empower them. Enlarge their territory. Let them not remain the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them expand. Even as, 20, as, we, even as we are drawing to 2019, expand them. Expand them. Let 2019 be their year. Let them just march into millions in 2019, even from January, in the mighty name of Jesus. Those partnering with the vision, those partnering with the tithes, those partnering with the offerings, even those partnering uh, by love, expand them. Let 2019 be there, yea, in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak a blessing. Every case that has been invoked against you by witches, wizards, by the enemy to say you shall delay, I refuse on your behalf. I declare by the prophet spirit that you shall make it. You shall make it, you shall expand. Your territory is a, has been expanded today in Jesus' mighty name. 2019, you shall be smiling. Money will never be an option. Money will never be an option. This is the message that also God had given me. He says, that's why I have started those even in debts. I have just started clearing their debts because I want them to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. So 2019, you will be enjoying the benefits of the kingdom, the fruits of the kingdom. What are those fruits? Uh, the spiritual fruits, even the physical fruits, you'll be experiencing both. You will sit in the presence of the Lord and eat with him. The Lord will sit and eat with you and the enemies will be watching to say, how is it possible? And the Lord will do it for you in the name of Jesus. I encourage you for those partnering and for those tithing, carry on. 
keep doing that the lord is expanding you the lord is expanding you is enlarging your territory god bless you so subscribe also to our youtube channel global seer uh, that's the name of the channel on youtube in jesus name global seer global seer uh, share the videos with others and also let's be very prayerful so in this 40 days you are going to notice that I'll be prophesying a lot because we are entering this season of fasting where we'll be spending more time praying and decreeing things. And I'll be praying for you almost every day, especially these who are already participating. I know you by name. So when I pray, I will involve you. When you also pray, pray for me as yes, I'll be praying for you. In Jesus' name, our territory will definitely expand. 2019 is going to be a glorious year. Uh, by by the time we reach 2020, if I'm not mistaken, I think the spirit will be poured already upon all flesh. 2019 and 2020 to 2021, somewhere there, the spirit will be poured upon all flesh. So this is what happens. <clears throat> Everybody has the spirit of Jesus or the spirit of God in them. But <clears throat> it does not mean you are going to operate or know how to work with that spirit if you don't know. Like already there are people right now, even on the same platform, they have the ability, but they just don't know how to work with the spirit of Christ. So what am I saying is, you now need training. You need training. School is something that you can never run away from. That's why you saw that in every country, actually God made it a right that everybody has the right to education. Why? It's because even earth itself, where we are now is a school. If you pass, you make heaven. You fail, you go to hell. So even in heaven, there are schools there. If you go there right now, you think that I'm going to just find Jesus sitting on the throne. You will not even find him on the throne. You will find him teaching. Or you will find him busy doing other things. Of course, Jesus has the ability to, to multiply himself. So what I'm trying to say is, he... It's not just like sitting. Like he doesn't believe in laziness. He believes in action. So you will find people serving. Serving. The elders, the 24 elders, you will not even find them on the throne. Even the living creatures. You can actually find them very busy. Some, sometimes God even sends them out of heaven to, to serve him in a different way. Because earth is not actually the only planet where there are beings. Earth this earth and heaven, is, these are not only the planets. They are planets and planets according to what I have seen. And it's the reason why I'm giving you this knowledge. I have stretched my spirit. I have that ability that if I hear something, if I read a book, uh, this is why I normally don't like reading most of the time books. Because the moment when I take a book, I remember I bought an, another book concerning angels. I said I will read it. The moment when I tried to read that book, I discovered that I had already, my spirit had read everything already. So the book that I love, that I've read several times and that I keep reading is this Holy Bible. Though I encourage you to read books. Clean up in books. Clean up with books. Research. Even now, uh, especially the books, uh, I think uh, Mike Medock, they will be very helpful if he does have books because I believe in his teachings of seeds, of sowing. They are very powerful. So I encourage you, be a doer of the word. Read the word. Shalom. We are going to meet again Wednesday, 8 p.m. If there are questions later, maybe that will come in your thoughts. You just put them on this very platform and we'll come back to you. I love you. Thank you.